everybody, it's Sam from Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I've got this really nice showstopper card for you. So this is a 6x6 six six version of the 5x7 version interlock card that I shared about a year ago. Maybe, yeah, no, I think it was last year. I will link it here anyway. So if you do prefer 5x7 styles, then check that one out because it's a really nice card and it's been very, very popular. But I wanted to do a 6x6 six six version and then the way this one ended up working out in my head, I ended up making it a double version of that. So if you did want to make the 5x7 bigger, then just follow this tutorial because you'll be able to see how to do that. But it's turned out lovely. So this is how it is. So it's six by, it's just under actually, it's about five and three quarters because um, those measurements worked best to get the most out of your cardstock. And uh, so this is how it looks. So it will fit into one of my box envelopes, but you could also make a bouncy envelope um, if you're maybe giving it by hand, that might be um, another option for you. But you open it up and as you open it, the whole thing opens up like this. Now, it, yeah, it's a it's a larger card. Um, it's also a decoration. I think if you just wanted to have this, if I turn it this way, that's how it looks. So you might want to have this as a decorative piece for your own mantle, and I think that would look really, really nice. I have already seen somebody share on the Mixed Up Crafters group, because I made this during a Facebook Live, so um, a lot of the ladies there and men have been making this already and sharing their styles. Someone's put birthday, spout out the word birthday in the squares. Other people were saying about putting photos in there. You could have this actually in a scrapbook. That could be stuck to one of the pages and then they can pull out, you know, this page and have all these photos, which I think would look really nice. Please don't be put off by this. It's very, very easy to make. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not, it's, it looks a lot more, you know, harder than it, than it actually is. But it's very, very fun. And I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this and it was really nice to color and, um, and finish the decoration. So I didn't get around to doing all of that during the live because I just wanted to really focus on the construction. On the back there, you have lots of room to be able to write your message. And again, it's one of those great ones for if you've got a work colleague who's leaving, there's lots of people to sign. Um, you've got all the back there as well if you wanted to. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so for the stamping, I've used the stamp set that comes in the latest issue of Creative Stamping and it's issue 88. And it's this one here, so it's the Floral Christmas. I have my own set, this is another set that came because I actually done some of the um, inspiration in the magazine. So you have this section here, which is your John Next Door stamps and then all of this here is Floral Christmas. So I've really used a lot of these stamps. I've used the odd little flower but I've used the Ponsetti as there you can see and here um, to decorate the front. It's a really pretty set. Um, it's A4, it's always good value for money and you get a lovely magazine. And this one here was one of the cards that I'd done for the magazine, which made it onto the front cover, which I was super pleased about. But you can just see this, just an idea of, of some of the lovely cards you can create with that stamp set. But I'll link all of that below. For the main apertures, I'm using the Daisy May Distressed Squares. I don't believe these are available anymore. That's my stamps, so I just um, shrink mine down to fit into these little A5 pockets, and then they fit within my little tubs that I have all my stamps in. And for the embossing, I've used the X-Cut Tartan Knit. Again, if I can find it, I will link it. So I've done lots of bits and pieces. I've even stuck some of the mats and layers down just to speed up the video um, and just really show you how to construct it all. So for the main card, you're going to need two pieces that are 12 by five and three quarters. And you're gonna score along the long side at five and three quarters and 11 and a half. And you're gonna do that on two pieces. Okay, so there's my two there. Um, we'll fold and burnish in a minute, so you know you're doing it in the right direction. Then you'll want one piece that is six and a quarter by five and three quarters, because we need to put, stick this all together. Um, and along that six and a quarter side, you just want to score at five and three quarters. So you're just creating a half inch tab there. And then this piece here is just five and three quarters by five and three quarters. Okay, so then for the mats and layers, so to go inside, I've got these here and I'm doing silver instead of white this time, so I thought I'd try that. So these are five and a half for the silver by five and a half and then five and a quarter by five and a quarter for the embossed. And you can see that tartan embossing folder looks really nice. Now I've got three because this one's going to go on the front, these two are going on the inside. And then for the back, I've just got the white one, which is where I'm going to stamp. And that one is, actually no, you want it to be that. But yeah, do five and a half. You can have five and a quarter if you want, it's up to you. If you want to mat and layer it, but I'm gonna do, um, I'll put another layer on that actually. But yeah, so you just want the same as those really, four of each if you're gonna do the back with the mats and layers. And then for the actual concertina kind of um, interlock piece, you'll want two pieces that are three and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. And you want to score along the long side at three and a quarter, 
six and a half and nine and three quarters. So that's the two pieces there. And then you just want one piece that is again three and a quarter by six and a half. And you're going to score along the long side at three and a quarter. Okay, then for your mats and layers to decorate that interlock piece, you'll want eight pieces of three by three, and I've done the silver, and then you'll want eight pieces of two and three quarter by two and three quarter. And then I've just fussy cut a few bits here, which is what I'm using to decorate the front, because I didn't want to go too mad with the front, because you don't see it when it's open. Although saying that, if someone maybe doesn't have a huge amount of room, or once you start getting more cards through the Christmas period, they can still just kind of display it like so. Um, so you do want there to still be some kind of nice feature on the front. So I've kept it simple, but still quite pretty. Um, and I've just prepared all of those ready. So let me show you how to now construct the card. Okay, so you want these two pieces here. So these are the largest pieces where you would have scored at five and three quarters and um, 11 and a half. These ones here, we want to cut the aperture out. Now I've used this one. Let me remember which one it was. It was a smaller. So you can have any aperture size that you want. Um, I've gone for three quarters of an inch squared with this one. So any of your nest dies really. You could do circular. Um, you just need to make sure that the piece that interlocks through the apertures is going to be able to fit quite nicely and, and kind of comfortably sit there. But you could do rectangles. In the 5 by 7 version I do use rectangles because that size fits better. Um, but for this one this is the size I've got. And then with the Daisy May ones you get the next size up is this distressed um, kind of wonky um, one which is how I created the frame so I need to cut my frame so I'll show you that in a moment so what I'm doing because this is 216 GSM this is the Tonic Studios cardstock so I'm just going to fold and burnish that score line there and that one just folds it in half and you'll have this half inch piece just over the top there so I'm going to sit this over the top and I'm going to grab some of my washi tape and I'm going to die cut through both of those layers at the same time so um, you may depend on your die cutter machine and the die it may just maybe mark the one underneath but then you can open up and then lay the die back down on that one and then die cut it again um, but at least then you know that it's exactly where you want it to be so I think I've got that about right but what I did do then is just go around and measure and um, I was coming in at seven eighths of an inch on all four sides so I'm going to run that through my machine. Okay, so I've got those two. So when you open this one up, it's going to attach to this hinge on this one here. So I'm just going to fold this one towards me. So that one will stick in like so. And then on this end one here, you're going to fold this one up. You're going to have your five and three quarter by five and three quarter piece okay like so you want that fold this join to be on the back one because then you're just going to cover that with the way you kind of write your message on the front one here so that will be like so and then the front one when you fold this piece so this is that five and three quarters by six and a half piece so again just burnish that that one's going to stick in there so when we close the card up, that join is hidden underneath. So it looks like a nice clean front. Okay, so if we start sticking this together, so we'll start with this one first. And I'm going to use my Kalau glue because it will start to strengthen the card. Because obviously we've cut a lot away. We need to start kind of building some of that strength back in. So when we add the frame, that will bring in a lot of support again for the card as well. So I'm just going to spread out that glue. And then pop that one like so. And if you kind of close the card as you fold them, that way you know it's going to fold nice and flat as well as open up. And you want that to just be, see that I've got a really nice join, a little bit of glue that's come out, but that's okay. And then, you know, that piece there is on the back. You're not going to see that. All right. And then, so right now you have that piece. So then you'll have this hinge here to connect this next piece. So again, just going to open that one up. Get my glue out. And again, just sit that one in there and let it get right down into the score line. You want it to look like a, you know, it's one big piece. 
apart from obviously the joins being on the back, but on the front, you don't want that person to be looking at it kind of thinking, wow, it's just one long piece. So again, you can see I've gone right up into the corner. It's hard to see now that that was ever two separate pieces. So again, just fold it all down. So it's like a concertina and just kind of burnish, you know, that into position again and then fold that one. So now we have this long piece. So all we're left with now is this last tab and that five and three quarter piece, which is going to stick on there. And like I said, you're gonna have that there, but we're gonna cover that with the writing. But again, it's on the back, so it's not gonna be seen all the time. So again, just stick that one down. And just fold it over like you did the other ones. Again, you just wanna make sure that it's right up into the the crease there. But now you have your card, okay, apart from adding now the, the interlock, but there's the kind of framework, okay, and it should all fold down into that five and three quarter size, okay. So I now want to create some frames because you want to kind of get that stuck down before we, um, or you need to, because you won't be able to, once you've added the next sections, all of this part, you won't be able to attach the frames. So with the original square that I used, I've then got this frame, and this one I think was, it's a hard one to kind of measure because you've, it's, it's all a bit um, uneven, but it's roughly coming in at like four and three quarters. Um, yeah, so have a look at what you've got, but I'm basically gonna sit that like so, and then you wanna, attach it with some tape with a nice kind of even frame again mine's a little bit harder to do but you can get a rough idea it's going to be something like something like that and I'm just going to pop some tape there and I'm now going to run that through using I think I'm going to do silver I'm going to use yeah, the silver here and if you can see here it's all this stitch detail so that should come up quite nicely so I'm now going to die cut enough to cover this to frame this one this one this one and this one so four frames so I'm going to go and get them all die cut okay so there's my frames can you see all that detail they look fantastic so next I'm going to now stick these on to the four apertures here so I'm going to again use my kalau because this will start to strengthen it so I'm just going to lay it flat for a minute and I'm going to now stick them all down so they frame those squares. Okay, so now I have my frames. I think they look really nice in the silver. So I'm gonna pop that to one side. And next, we can work on this piece here. So it's gonna work in the same kind of way, but what you wanna have, so you've got your two here, and you should have three squares that are three and a quarter squared, and then you'll have a half inch piece on the end here. So what's gonna happen is you wanna do a valley and then a mountain, and then that will be a valley, okay? And then with this one, you wanna do a mountain, valley, mountain, okay? Because that is gonna stick into that one. This one here is gonna to attach to the front. It's gonna be this one here. So it's gonna be that front piece here, all right? So you do wanna fold them just slightly differently. So that one will be valley, mountain, valley. This one will be mountain, valley, mountain. So I'm going to pop my glue in this one here and just, again, just attach it exactly the same way that you did with the main frame. I'm just going to fold that over. And then with this one at the end, so I'm going to have it like so. This one, you just want to create a valley fold. And you're now going to add glue to the side of this because it's a mountain. And you're going to attach that one and then this one will stick at the other end so you want to make sure you've just got two flat pieces with a valley fold so there's a valley fold at that end and there's a valley fold at this end here okay now I'm going to decorate this before I stick it in there because I think it's easier to do so that's when I'm going to now stick these pieces down now I have done them the same as this one so I'm just going to open this one up here there we go, so you can see what we've got. So um, let's just move it down a little bit that way. There we go, you can see everything now. So I'm going to have my Mary and Bright, my mistletoe, a poncettia, then the piece on earth, and then the just for you, and then that one finishes with the wishing you. That one then is the poncettia, and then that one I've got facing 
that way and that one's facing that way. So I'm going to stick those all down now. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to just concertina fold it all together. So you've got like a little book. Just squash it all down. It should, you can see there, my nicely all lays over each other so you know everything's all lined up. So then we can now attach it to this piece. So what we want to do is you're going to basically, first of all, actually, before we do that, you want to stick these mats and layers down. So that one needs to go there and this one is going to go at that end. So I'm going to just quickly stick those down. Okay, so now make sure this is the right way up. So I'm going to pop my glue on this side here. And then you want to sit this one in the middle of this here. Now if you close up some of these, then you can use that as your guide. So make sure it's in the centre of that frame, okay? And then that should also be the centre of there because of the way that you know you would have measured and lined it up. So I'm just going to make sure that's straight there. And I'm happy with how that sits there. And then you want to add glue to this side. And then you're just going to close your card. I'm going to give it a few minutes just to kind of grip but I will still have a little bit of time to move it around so once I open it I can double check you know in case I do need to just move it slightly. Just reposition it just a little bit there but it's, it's still going to work and close nicely like it does. So now you can open it up and you have your card. Isn't that lovely? I think it looks so nice with the silver this time. Really, really like it. I've also got my Posca pen. I should have maybe done that before I put this in because I've put some stitch detail. You can see here I've got some faux stitching. Um, I'm probably going to do that and I just use the paint pen here. This is the white Posca pen and um, I'll do that. But now I'm just going to close that back up again. Finish the front. So I've got this one. Pop that one on there. And then I've got these pieces here. So I've got my glue gun on. So let's pop that one about there. And then I'm just going to feed in these bits and pieces. There we go. Just a really simple design. I'm actually going to bring in some of my sparkle pen. I'm probably going to put some glitter on this actually and I'm going to use the Nouveau drops on the berries. So you'll see that in the photos because that will take a little bit longer to um, dry. But I think I'm going to put some glitter throughout the card actually. I think that looked really nice. And then on the back I've just got this one here. So again if you want to add mats and layers to it you can. But um, there's so much going on on the card. I'm just going to keep this one like so and then I'll stamp my message later and that will just strengthen that card as well. Okay so there is the finished card so let me open up this one so you can see it with the the green and the red just pop it there so you can see it and then this one here nice with that silver border and then again look at that <laughs> I think they look fantastic I'm so pleased with these they're such big cards, they really are great uh, showstoppers. So yeah, I'm going to put some glitters, I think, on the on the petals there, just so this really does shine. And like I said, I think it's a lovely mantle piece as well as a decoration, not just a card. So yeah, that is my double interlock concertina card and um, I hope you enjoy it. I'll add it to the showstopper playlist so if you're new to the channel um, check out that playlist because there are lots of other big showstopper cards. They're great for those special birthdays, big anniversaries and Christmas and things like that so um, yeah check them out you might enjoy them. I'll also link the 5x7 version here along with maybe a, a, another concertina style card or something that you might enjoy. If you haven't subscribed to my channel if you just click on my face you'll be able to subscribe and if you hit the notification bell you'll be notified when I next upload a video. So thanks for watching as always and I'll be back again very soon. Bye!